Evening folks, how you doing? It's the last bike of the evening. I've got, it's kind of late, I'm burning some midnight oil here, but I thought I'd do a quick video while I got these bikes in, because it's good content, right? It's like uh, a GL 1800 2010 model, how to change the rear wheel. If you're gonna do one of these bikes, you don't need a stand. A stand makes it a lot easier. You don't have to crawl around the floor, you know, for oil changes and whatnot. Um, there's a rear trap door on this thing and you just take the trap door off and the wheel rolls out. You do need a torque wrench. 80 foot pounds of torque on the lug nuts. There's five lug nuts, just like an automobile. Uh, passenger car, most passenger cars use five lug nuts and aluminum rims. So uh, really common stuff here, but do use a torque wrench because it is obviously kind of important that you, your rear wheel stays firmly attached to your motorcycle. So with that said, I'm going to show you the trap door. Here we go. There's uh, five millimeter Allen bolts, one here, one here, and one here, and one here. There's one, two, three, four. The lug nuts are right there. So you got one, two, three, four, five. Jam it in first gear, like so. And if you're by yourself and it's still spinning, you can also put a little bungee cord here on the brake from here down to the bench or the floor or a brick or something. I don't know. Use your imagination. Once you got the plate off, there's bolts under here. There's a six millimeter bolt with a 10 mil head on it. Same with the other side. That bar comes off. Bolts up here too. I just put a bungee cord up there, hold it out of the way. That should give us enough clearance to take the wheel off. Five. It's a heavy bikes, man. Now I don't know if you have to take this canister off, but I did. I don't like wrestling with the bike when it's up on the bench like this and a huge bike at that, even though it's strapped down. Be gentle. Now if you're changing the oil on this thing, it's pretty easy. There's a drain plug right at the front, under there. And the oil filter's right there. Here's a filter for it. It's a 15410 MFJD01 Honda Goldwing 2010. There's one here, then there's one on top, which was finger tight from the last guy who was in here. And then there's one, there's one there in the back, right here. And then there's another on the side. So, and then this whole, this whole panel comes off and then you can get the oil filter off. Some of these gold wings have lights on the front. Spotlights right there that you might have to contend with. The drain plug right there on the front. Right beside the oil filter conveniently. There we go. Easy. And then get a oil filter wrench like this. This one says 65p 14. I believe that's 14 flutes as they call it. And then then it makes a oil filter change quite a bit easier but don't over tighten it. You can go a little too nuts with these things because you can get a lot of torque on there. I'll just put the oil filter down in there. By the way this bolt, <clears throat> the head on it is a 17 millimeter, otherwise known as a three quarter, but 17 is a better fit because it is a 17. On the drain plug, there's a little crush washer underneath. Should you replace it? Sure, why not? If you got it, if you don't, don't sweat it. These things get a little overblown these days. 
soap and water on it. Get it all lubricated. Put some rim protectors on it. Get it started. They're actually not that bad to do. This rim will be just fine. If there's a TPS sensor, be mindful of that. Some have them, some don't. Just, you know, we'll clean all the excess rubber off the rim nicely. Set it to your favorite air pressure, which is usually the recommended pressure on the side, 36 to 38. A little more, a little less, depending on your riding, how cold it is, weight, luggage, all kinds of factors there. Get her up on the balance stand. You should balance them. You get far more mileage out of these things. And you don't get very much mileage out of one of these big pigs anyway, in terms of a tire. The cost per mile economy is kind of up there. If you don't factor in your investment and your happiness, I suppose that riding the bike brings you. But however, you should balance them less funny wear in the end and be aware, be aware that you need, you need a balance stand of some sort. If you're going to balance them and you need sticky weights, it's got little bearings here, so it turns nice and freely. There's no bearings in this, of course. The bearings are in the hub, so you need uh, the cones to put in the middle to get this thing to balance. And you just find the heavy spot on the bottom, and then you counter it with a heavy spot on the top of equal proportion, and then hence it balances. So you got a bit of trial and error with sticky weights doing it statically. This is a static balancer. They still use these in race bikes, by the way. It's a, it's a pretty good way, method of balancing your wheel. It's pretty precise. Just take your time. A bit of lube and you need a tire stand and you need the weights and you need a torque wrench. So if you got all those things you're rocking and man, you can save a lot of money and time and convenience if you learn how to do it yourself. You need to clean the surface where you're going to put the sticky weight on, rub it with a clean rag, brake clean before you apply the sticky weights. Otherwise the sticky weights won't stick. Now after you get the wheel balanced, mount it back on those studs. Check your brake pads while you're in here. And you can see there's lots of pad material left. So you don't even need to take anything apart, but visually inspect it way easier once you got your head underneath here. Lug nuts back on, all five of them. Preferably not just finger tight. So torque these things up, 30 all around, crisscross pattern, and then after 30, put them to 80. And then after you put them to 80, torque them all again. Just make sure they're all tight. Just got the tire on. Gonna put it all back together. Put this back in, this little piece here, the holder, and then the rear cover right there. And you're all done. Roll her off the bench, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, brand new tire, ready to go. There's where you fill it up.
at the panel there. It's got little tabs. One, two, three. Right there. Little tabs just pop straight off to pop back in. There's your fill plug. It probably goes without saying that the YouTube videos are not a substitute for the workshop manual. So do buy a workshop manual, OEM one preferably, and uh, hope that helps somebody. Just a quick go-to reference, uh, throw it out there on YouTube, and yeah, cool, man. So anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. Exhausted for the night, done a bunch of bites today, so this last one, 2 o'clock in the morning, going to wash up and go to bed. Take care. Ciao. Showing it? Oh. <laughs> I'm for a friend. Just put the tires on it.